Good morning and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, where we take a look at headlines from our city, our state, and our country, along with all kinds of information that helps us to connect with Puerto Vallarta, with our culture, with our surroundings, as a community of English-speaking locals. As always, it is a pleasure to find ways to create connections for you, and if this is your first time enjoying this broadcast, feel free to let us know by adding the word new to your comment, and we will give you a proper welcome when you do that. And if you have any important questions or comments that you wish to make during the broadcast and have addressed, please add the letter Q at the beginning of your comment, and we'll be happy to look at them as quickly as possible. Today is Wednesday, uh, April 28th, and we have important news to share about COVID-19 vaccines. We have some stupidity-related news. We have kitchen porn. We have Walking Wednesday. We have a visit to a local restaurant that uh, didn't quite start the way it was hoped it would start, but nothing, no big whoop. I want to tell you about it, but it's not a major deal. I just want to talk about it. So we might as well get started again. Feel free to share your comments during the broadcast. And if there's something that's really, really important, just add the letter Q and we'll get to it as soon as we can. Let us dive into the news. As I said just a second ago, three important news items about vaccines. We start, we start with teachers. Puerto Vallarta now has a venue for uh, teacher vaccination to take place between today and May 1st. And that venue is the La Lija Sports Unit in Pitillal. Jorge Antonio Quintero, who is the director of the Regional Educational Services Delegation, estimates that approximately 9,000 teachers and school workers from Puerto Vallarta, Cabo Corrientes, Tomatlán, San Sebastián del Oeste, Mascota, Talpa de Allende, Atenguillo, Mixtlán, and Huachinango municipalities will be gathering at La Lija in the coming days to receive the vaccine. Those teachers that are involved or are working at public schools are expected to pre-register at a website provided on this article. And for those teachers and school workers that are involved in a private institution, it is their principals who will handle the responsibility to register their faculty and staff to that effect. Uh, the teachers and school workers, by the way, will receive the CanSino vaccine and in case you are wondering where La Lija is located, I did a quick Google Maps search and found it without any problem. I want to share it with you. So here we are. There is La Lija. And just so that you can get a sense as to where it is, let me zoom in. There's Fluvial. And there is um, part of Pitillal. This would be the, like the downtown area of Pitillal right here. There's Cuapinole. And La Lija is all the way out here. And that is precisely where vaccination 
for teachers is going to take place. Again, vaccination for teachers will be taking place between today and May 1st. Moving on with our important COVID-19 headlines, vaccination headlines. Uh, we have news uh, for those of us that are between ages of 50 and 59. Vaccination process for this group of citizens, individuals, begins today with pre-registration as indicated by Mexico President Andres Manuel López Obrador in his morning press conference. The expectation is to begin vaccination during the first week of May. And based on the current data available in Mexico's Census Bureau, or INEGI, as it is called, the government is hoping to vaccinate at least 9,128,769 people between those ages. As before, basic information is required to pre-register for the vaccine. The website goes on this morning. In fact, it should be on by the time... Um, you know, it has been on since the broadcast started. But uh, this time around, the government was quick to indicate that vaccination order has nothing to do with when you pre-register. I think we were not misled, not misled, but somehow in the past vaccination registration period for seniors, um, I think many of us were under the impression that if you did not pre-register, you would not even be eligible to get a vaccine. That is not the case. Uh, the government has been quick to inform us this time around that pre-registration is primarily useful for the authorities to be able to coordinate their logistics and scheduling at each vaccination site. Now, what does that mean? It means that by pre-registering, you are helping or we are helping the government get a sense as to how many vaccines they have to have at any specific location and when. Does it mean that they will call to let you know that you're, it is your turn? They may or they may not. All that I can recommend is that we are as vigilant as possible as to when these things are happening. We know from past experience that the government does not give us a lot of days in advance to plan for our lives. So uh, it is important that we are mindful of this if we are between the ages of 50 and 59. The next vaccine-related news item that I wish to share with you um, has to do with those seniors that, for whatever reason, did not manage to receive the Pfizer vaccine when it was readily available to them. Alongside with teacher vaccinations, the government has set aside a lot of 2,000 CanSino vaccines for seniors here in Puerto Vallarta. And these will be available for three days starting today, starting this morning at the Ixtapa Dome. All you need to do is show up with your ID, your registration, your CURP number. And it is worth mentioning that the CanSino vaccine is a single dose inoculation. And as before, if you are wondering where the Ixtapa Dome is located, again, <clears throat> excuse me, a simple Google Maps search revealed its location. And I'm happy to share it with you. There is the Domo Deportivo Ixtapa right here. And to give you a sense as to where that is in relationship with our city and all that good stuff, um, here's the Las Juntas intersection. Um, here's where Home Depot is located. It's uh, somewhere over there. Um, and this is where the city is located. That's where Marina Vallarta is. So it is all the way out here in the middle of nowhere. Well, not in the middle of nowhere, but it's all the way in Ixtapa. So if you need a vaccine, if you're a senior citizen or resident that for whatever reason did not get your vaccine, this is the chance to do it. And um, I suggest you, you get that done. Now, <clears throat> let us dive into the weather. How much meat could a meat bag eat if a meat bag could eat meat? That is the question that snarky weather poses for us today. Apparently, the answer is no more than four pounds a year. I have no idea what that is in reference to, but if you happen to know, just let us know in your comments. The weather forecast for Wednesday for today is partly cloudy through the day with a high temperature of 30, low temperature 21. Uh, Thursday, we can expect a clear day throughout the day. Um, it's going to be a high temperature of 30, a low temperature of 20. 
And on Friday, we can expect a partly cloudy day with a high temperature of 31 and a low temperature of 19. If you were out and about yesterday afternoon or early evening and looked towards the mountains, the sky was looking rather ominous. Ominous? Is that the word? O ominous? Ominous. Scary. Like it could, like like we could have a cloud burst any minute. Um, and I suppose it's going to start raining soon. People don't think that we're going to get rain until um, <clears throat> later on in the month of May. But the sky sure looked like it could have started raining any moment. Hopefully that'll happen sometime soon. <clears throat> now, I want to show you a bit of <laughs> this news item has very little to do with Puerto Vallarta. Um, in fact, it has nothing to do with Puerto Vallarta, and it has more to do with the way politics can sometimes play out in Mexico when we are in the middle of an electoral period. There is a political party out there called Fuerza por México, and that translates to strength for Mexico. And in the state of Querétaro, the candidate for governor, let me show you this because it is absolutely priceless, the candidate for governor for that particular political party has presented a tool which, he, with which he pretends to exhibit proposals that may that are made by other candidates and um, and measure them. It's called the stupid meter or the stupidometer or the estupidometro. And he attempts or claims that he's going to use this very important tool to measure just how feasible. The projects that his rivals are going to present are. Um, for me, it looks a lot like a printed piece of paper with uh, pink ink and a pink background and pink face masks and a tie, all nicely coordinated. I am not saying this is good or bad. This just seems to be the way politics, uh, politics games play out in our country. I do wonder just where does his stupid meter ranks his own idea when it comes to stupidity. I don't know what to tell you. I just thought I would share it because it seemed to be funny at the time. And of course, another um, headline that I wish to share with you, I've fallen prey uh, to another kitchen porn article from Huffington Post. This one is called 26 Handheld Kitchen Tools Reviewers Can't Stop Raving About. And of course, I've shared with you um, my affinity with kitchen regarding uh, kitchen related gadgets, but also my mindfulness at not spending money foolishly. Uh, but with your permission, I'd like to react to some of these items. Let's just go through the list because it is quite inclusive. It starts with a classic handheld OXO can opener. I don't think that is a useless item. Of course, I have one of those. Um, but then it continues with a plastic lemon squeezer. I've always um, sworn by the metal ones that you can get here in Mexico. I remember that they used to be very expensive in the States, but I like my metal one. Then there's this contraption, a, an OXO small egg beater that promises that your omelets will be nice and fluffy when you use it. I think my omelets are just fine, or maybe I'm just missing out on something. A milk frother, not for me. And then there's a handheld garlic press, um, again, it looks pretty, but no, do I need it? I don't need it. Um, a compact eight in one spiralizer. Um, I think life is quite peaceful without one of these. Um, although it's only $14.99 on Amazon. A cookie scoop. I don't think so. Um, a too cute egg separator. Really? Um, no, please don't get that for me for Christmas. Thank you. Um, a culinary blowtorch. Um, well, I could use that for for 420, I suppose. I don't know that I need one of those. A set of pan scrapers. I've been doing fine without one of those. An oven mitt. I have those, of course. Who doesn't has an who doesn't have a uh, oven mitt? A handheld knife sharpener. I have one of those. An immersion blender. I swear by mine. I must confess, uh, I like it. A corn. Check this out. A corn butter knife. Um. Well, you know, some people might find it essential, not me. A stainless steel three-cup sifter. Well, mine is a little smaller, and I don't use it that frequently. Um, a customizable pizza cutter. I don't even have a pizza cutter, cutter, let alone a customizable one. Anyhow, 
I think we're almost to the end of this. No, there's still there's still like ten more of these to go. So let me just not waste your time. But I'm gonna leave you with this link so that you can take a look at it and uh, and um, you can decide for yourself whether you need any of these things or whether there are any essential gadgets that you have for your kitchen leave a comment in the comments so that we can get a sense as to how important these things are to you again has nothing to do with puerto vallarta but you know i just had to talk about it um now before we move on to our wednesday walk i'd like to tell you a little bit about my experience at bonito kitchen yesterday but first i want to disclaim I've never wanted Coffee and Headlines to become a rant depository, and this is not even a rant, or at least I hope it will not be perceived as one. This is more of one of those things in which the message that we're trying to convey is, hey, Bonito Kitchen, something happened, and it's not a deal breaker, but we think you should know. Yesterday, I made plans to have lunch with a friend of mine, and when she contacted me, contacted me early in the morning, and she asked me, well, what time do you want to go? The first thing that I did is what I always do with restaurants. I go onto Facebook to find out what time they're open and what time they're closed. And I immediately found the location for Bonito Kitchen near Costco and La Comer Influvial. And I very quickly looked at their about information. And their about information says that they open at 9 a.m. And they close at 10 p.m. And I figured, well, how lovely that they're serving breakfast. But I was not interested in breakfast. I was interested in lunch. So I made a date with my friend to meet at 1 o'clock. Did I read this article over here where it contradicts itself and says that they're open from 1 to 10? No, I actually didn't see it. Um, my bad. Because for better or worse, Facebook is very clear at providing this information over here. Uh, so I figured, you know, if we meet at 1 p.m. It'll be lovely. We'll have a lovely lunch. And um, and I got there like five minutes before one, and I found my friend who is in her late 70s. She is an elderly person. Uh, I found her sitting on the sidewalk, um, sweating. <laughs> I asked her, well, what are you doing here? And she's like, well, they don't open till one. And, um, <clears throat> and lo and behold, they, you know, it was five past one, and um, and they opened the door and they let us in. Um, but I kept thinking, you know, I, and, and, you know, the, the restaurant, again, this the restaurant is not under any obligation to open the door before one o'clock. And I appreciate that. But, you know, when I found my friend who is in her late 70s, she is sitting on the sidewalk. I thought to myself, well, you'd think that a um, restaurant manager or waiter would have had at least the courtesy or consideration or kindness to offer a senior citizen a place to sit down and wait for the restaurant to open. I asked my friend, what time did you get here? She said, well, I was early. I arrived 15 minutes prior. Would it have broken the restaurant if she had been allowed um, in 10 minutes before? No. Was the restaurant under any obligation? No. They certainly were not. Was the food to die for? Absolutely. The food was amazing. The only thing that I find regrettable is the fact that, number one, we've come to rely on places like Facebook to find rely, uh, trustworthy information about when restaurants are open or closed. And it is a little bit frustrating when people don't update their own Facebook pages. And also, you know, the part where, you know, my friend was just sitting on the street on the sidewalk. Um, so that was unfortunate. And I'm sure that it was not done deliberately. I am sure that it was an exception. But Bonito Kitchen, you know, maybe, maybe you would want to talk to your employees and make sure that they're a little bit more considerate next time. Your food, amazing. Will I come back? Yes, I keep hearing about dim sum and I really want to try it at the other location. But this was a little sour, not in the way in which I wanted it to be. Who's ready for a walk? I am. Let's go for a walk.
hello there. Today we are standing just across the street from Calle Francia in Colonia Versalles. We are walking down Francisco Medina Asensio. And where are we going? Well, we're walking to the beach. Come with me. and reach the beach we have. We are at the very first entrance to Playa Camarones, which means the shrimp beach. This is the beach that is right in front of Colonia Cinco de Diciembre. And we're gonna walk this week to this beach today just to see what we can find. Now, to get us started, we entered the beach through the first public access we have part of the Buenaventura Hotel there. And then we have another part of the Buenaventura Hotel here. That would be the Buenaventura Grand. And this is one of the hotels that features a day pass that we've been thinking about discovering. So what we're going to do today is just see what's available from the point of view of the beach. Are there any beach clubs here that we should know about or interesting places where we can hang out? And that is what we're going to find out today. Needless to say, the Buenaventura Grand has cordoned off part of the beach so that they can offer services to their hotel guests, and that is quite common. Now, regardless of the beach. Looking at here in front of me is the beach side of Barracuda, which is a wonderful seafood restaurant. We are due to go back to Barracuda because of their fish tacos. They have to be featured in our taco map. And Barracuda has been one of my favorite go-to restaurants during the pandemic because they have al fresco sitting. You can choose to sit on the beach or you can choose to sit upstairs at the restaurant. And the restaurant is completely open and there's always a great breeze coming in from the ocean here. Coming up on the left is the Semarnat or Natural Resources Protection Secretary. We've mentioned them before at least once. This is the secretary responsible for looking after our environment.
now I'm looking at a lot of umbrellas but I honestly cannot tell you if these are umbrellas that people brought on their own or if they are renting them there are a couple of properties here right against the ocean and the first one I believe is a hotel the second one has to be a private apartment building because I see a sign that says apartment for sale a lot of people are hanging out at the beach today but it doesn't feel crowded nor does it feel like people are imposing on each other as far as safe distance is concerned One of the nice features about the beach here in Colonia Cinco de Diciembre is that every street that reaches the ocean has an open access point. So you can get onto the beach without any complication at any one of the streets located in this neighborhood. Hola, ¿qué onda? Coming up here on the left hand side is a beach club that I know as Mango's Beach Club, but I can't help but to notice that all their umbrellas say Luna Azul. This could be the new name for the venue. And I think it's worth stopping by and checking out what it is and what they have. Let us get off the beach for just a second. I think I just saw a waiter wearing a shirt that reads mangoes. Oh, and the sign reads mangoes. So let's see what it is about. Hola. ¿Puedo checar el menú? Ah. Gracias, qué amable. So I've just asked to look at the menu, but this is what the venue looks like from the inside. It is still called Mango's Beach Club, and they offer restaurant, they do events. Taking a quick look at the menu, I see, for example, a tortilla soup for 100 pesos, a seafood salad for 190. Um, they serve tacos, shrimp tacos for 176, so this might be a good place uh, to hang out. Haven't been here in a long time, but I hope to check it out sometime in the near future. Muchísimas gracias, Lisette. So that was Mango's Beach Club, and now, we're going to continue down the beach. Again, this is Los Camarones Beach here in Colonia Cinco de Diciembre. <laughs> and 
and let's see what we find. So right as we pass this Los Mangos, there seems to be another hotel here. And it looks like it has a nice swimming pool up there. I really cannot see it from down here. But again, I think it's worth asking whether any of these hotels that are so close to the city have affordable day passes to hang out. It's not like one is looking for really fancy places or anything. An occasional swimming pool would be lovely. Buenas tardes. Buen provecho. ¿Le puedo hacer una pregunta nomás por curioso? ¿La sombrilla y las cosas para comer las trajo usted o las rentó? Qué bueno. Disfrute su día en la playa. Hasta luego. See, I just asked a very nice lady. She, I didn't even want to take her photograph. But she was sitting down under her umbrella, on her stool, eating some tostadas or something that she brought for herself. And I just asked her, did you rent that stuff or did you bring it here? And she said, no, this is my stuff. I brought it with me. So one thing I will say about people that enjoy the beach over here is that they are proactive, or some of them must be, about bringing their own chingaderas, all their accessories, so that they can enjoy the beach on their own time. Now this one here looks like a private condominium project. Gorgeous, gorgeous things. It must be nice to live so close to the ocean. Then again, whenever we've had hurricanes and, you know, foul temperature, I would be concerned of being so close to the beach. Here is yet another access to the beach. And as you can see, for this one, the government went all out in setting up a ramp for wheelchair access. And right behind it, what seems to be like another condo unit. I've walked past these units along the street. They have beautiful fronts, so they must have been built some time ago just by looking at the architecture. And, of course, the last access to the beach is the one that is located right behind the famous Hotel Rosita, which is arguably the first hotel to be built here in downtown Puerto Vallarta. Let us take a look at the back of it. And here we are. When you look at it from the street, it doesn't seem to be such a large property, but it is. Hotel Rosita has a nice large pool, presently mostly unused. Maybe they have a nice day pass.
And before you know it, we reached the end of Playa Camarones. Right in front of me is the very first major sculpture on the Malecon. This one is called In Search of Reason, or In Search for Reason, I don't remember. And I'm going to walk to the other end of it just to show you the next beach over, which of course is. Oh, no, muchas gracias. This is the beach that is located right in front of El Centro. Let's take a photograph here. And of course, we know pretty well that after the beach in El Centro is Los Muertos Beach, which is Puerto Vallarta's most popular beach. And this is probably a good point for us to end our little adventure. As always, I hope you've had a good time getting to know a little bit more about Puerto Vallarta. In fact, before we say goodbye, let me go back to where we came from and take a final photograph so we can look at the whole of Playa Camarones from its beginning. And we are zooming a little bit. And there it is. So, it was a nice beach walk. I hope you'll take it into account the next time you find yourself exploring around downtown Puerto Vallarta. Thank you for joining me, and I hope I will see you again soon. Ciao. And that was our Walking Wednesday walk. I apologize if some of the sound was a little bit noisy. It was a very, very windy day. And this was, of course, our broadcast for today. As always, I hope you were enlightened. I hope you enjoyed uh, the information. I hope you will um, take care of yourself if you are in one of these vaccine situations in which it's time to move on and register and you will follow through what needs to be done so that we can all take care of ourselves. Um, we'll get together again tomorrow, but between now and then, I hope you'll stay kind, stay happy, stay connected, stay safe, and most importantly, stay in touch. Have a great day.